Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we're here in lovely uh, Amador County, and I figured I'd give you guys a uh, little shop update. Had a whole ton of work happen in the last week or so. Um, my good buddy uh, Stan Zinkowski uh, from Barzi Industrial, and uh, our good friends at uh, American Rotary. Um, supplied uh, a bunch of uh, hardware and wire and uh, electrical conduit and all kinds of stuff and um, Stan came up with his big trailer and uh, he put me to work <coughs> let's just say so uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, the progress because I know that's what you guys are interested in um, we're making uh, major headway in getting the uh, in the shop powered up uh, actually right now uh, with some temporary uh, um, semi uh, um splice ends, I can actually run any machine in the shop now, which is like a big, major deal. So let's check out the, uh, the different bits and pieces that we did and um, kind of give you an update. And, uh, and I got some other little clips of a new machine that's coming to town. So uh, kind of exciting. So let's check it out. So when I was really originally talking to Stan about uh, the the right way to wire in uh, the rotary phase converter, I um, was having a hard time understanding uh, what he was suggesting. So uh, excuse me. Anyway, um, but it's really the it's really the hot whammy way to do it. So what we did was uh, I'm not even going to show you the old panel. There was an old junky panel here uh, with some. A single phase panel, okay, and it had some lighting and uh, one uh, uh, RV outlet in it and whatnot. So we tore all that out and replaced it with a 42 slot three phase breaker. And you see, we got it's it's three legs and a neutral, okay. Um, so this is a three phase uh, uh, panel, and then we have some three pole breakers and we have some two pole breakers. So it's very easy to. Um, to break up your powering uh, between three phase and single phase out of one panel. Okay, so what we have is the, the mains come through here, okay, and, um, um, and they um, feed the panel, and then this breaker here, this single pole breaker here, feeds the phase converter, and then one generated leg comes back from the phase converter and that's this blue one here and we, we make it blue just so it stands out and we know and this one's labeled uh, generated leg from phase converter so that makes up our three phase now if I'm not running the phase converter I still have a single phase panel still works okay so the lights are on right so uh, all the single phase loads will still work so I'm going to open the door and we'll take a peek outside at the, um, at the rotary phase converter and I'll fire it up for you. You guys can hear it. It's nice and quiet. It, it's nearly silent. Uh, it's in its own enclosure. Anyway, let's check that out. And that, that was a big deal here. And then I'll show you the conduit runs and we'll, we'll go through all this wonderful work that, uh, that um, Stan did and, uh, and he cracked the whip on me to, to, uh, to do too. So let's check it out. All right, here's our rotary phase converter. <clears throat> and um, so this is a 30 horsepower unit here. Um, and right now, I don't know if you can see it, but we got a pilot light here. And that means we have single phase power coming to this. It's not running right now. So I'm going to shut up for a second. You can listen to the background noise. Pretty quiet up here. Somebody's running a chainsaw a little ways off. But let's go ahead and fire this up. And you get an idea of the background noise there. So for those of you, <coughs> excuse me, for those of you that want to know, right now this is pulling about 20 amps uh, to run the motor to generate the uh, uh, to generate that third leg. So that's that's the overhead right now. So we're going to shut that off, and then it's it's spooling down now. Uh, so here's where the power comes in, and then the generated leg comes back, and then uh, <laughs> here's my latest assignment here, 
is to drive this ground ground rod fod ground fod in uh, this ground rod in. So this is eight. This was an eight foot ground fod <laughs> ground rod. Uh, this is all that's left. I don't know. I got about a foot to go, but I'll tell you, th this soil is really rocky, and I keep wetting this. And um, um, I ordered a uh, uh, a rota hammer attachment. Um, uh, for driving rods, so uh, hopefully uh, that'll show up and then I'll finish this off and then um, run a ground to the building and then, uh, and then a ground up to the panel too because there was no um, uh, bonding uh, for the building uh, which we were kind of surprised to see so uh, we'll take care of that and the CNC's really like to see a good ground so uh, so they don't get lose their brain or whatever so uh, anyway, that's my uh, one of my tasks there. So let's scope out some of this uh, gorgeous conduit work um, that Stan did. And uh, uh, Dale Derry from um, uh, Build Something Cool uh, came up uh, as well and hung out and uh, bent some conduit and helped us uh, do some stuff. But uh, this is just a nice industrial look here, right? Uh, nice, nice uniform bends, and then it goes into this rack that I'll show you in a sec. And then there's kind of an overhead bridge to uh, distribute to the rest of the shop. So here's uh, uh, after it comes out of the box and makes a couple of turns, comes over here. And then what we're doing is we're distributing, uh, we've divided the shop into four quadrants. These are two right here, and then there's two on the opposite side of the shop. But the conduits come up. And they go into these uh, kind of universal LBs, and then they go over over to the other side, and then a couple come down into each quadrant here. That is my uh, uh, my three phase loads uh, in those different areas: uh, lathe and mill, drill press, uh, wire EDM, um, and uh, on the other side, grinders and uh, saws and stuff. So pretty stoked. We Stan and I pulled a whole bunch of wire on. Um, on Monday, so uh, we were yanking wire and uh, and uh, taking names. So uh, and then there's <laughs> there's my uh, <laughs> over here. That's my uh, little sketchoid uh, tie in there. I got an extension cord on that, so I can actually run any machine in the shop now off of that one uh, that one thing if I want to. So guess what? When you're putting a shop together, you need to use your machines and make things. <laughs> Surprise! So this is my biggest uh, single phase load here, and you can see these these conductors are pretty pretty whopping. Uh, this feeds the uh, Miller Synchro Wave, um, the th 300 amp. Actually, it'll run 375 amps uh, full wide open, but it's a 100 amp uh, feed is what it is. Um, and anyway, I ordered some um, some special connectors to uh, to make all these connections so I can get it inside this box and Dale helped me run this uh, one inch conduit uh, that feeds the little uh, the utility box there and um, and then we have another uh, there's another circuit in there we were able to pull another circuit in there so that I can have um, another uh, uh, plug-in for the MIG welder that's near, uh, near the door here so the MIG welder's got kind of a short cord on it and uh, but and don't quite know where it'll end up uh, being used in the shop, so I'm putting a couple of outlets in for that. So anyway, pretty exciting, right? It's just some wires hanging out. But look at these things, man. <laughs> My hands are just aching from pulling uh, pulling wires and uh, doing uh, you know uncoiling stuff and squeezing things. It's just uh, it's, it's hell getting old. So when Stan was here. Um, I got to play with some of his uh, um, tools of the trade, so to speak, um, and it's, that's always really fun for me, anyway, because uh, people have different approaches to different kinds of problems. Anyway, uh, one of the tools that Stan uses the heck out of is one of these um, um, these Bosch. Uh, it's like a plum plum square laser. Okay, so what this one does is it. Uh, when you get it close to being level, um, it shoots a beam vertically, if back down, out the front, and then out the sides. And all these are orthogonal to one another. 
and it's got an internal leveling system so if you're within its ability to adjust um, it's all plumb so uh, I'll, I'll turn it on here actually it's kind of the only defect on this is this particular one has a crummy magnet um, but let's uh, let's improvise here because that's what we do right uh, I'm just gonna grab it actually I'm just gonna grab it like that just like you would with your hand right okay so now now hopefully you guys will be able to see this here turn said unit on okay so it's flashing so that means I'm not quite okay so there's a little spot on the floor and well let's see what you can see in the camera there can you see the floor there I don't know if you can see that spot maybe you can see it now so there's a red spot on the floor and there's one on the ceiling and there's one over here and then there's one over here and there's one going out into the woods out there um, so um, anyway you know, I, I've known of these things, right? I've known of these, but I've never, you know, they're just expensive enough that you're not going to buy one to play with it, right? Unless you're like me. But um, Stan showed me some very interesting uses for d making conduit runs with these, right? And um, anyway, he ended up giving me his old one. He bought a new one that's a green laser, and this is a red laser. Um, but he gave me his old one, and I, I gave him some stuff, so we traded but anyway, it's kind of cool. I've been playing around with it. And uh, if you haven't tried one of these, um, very interesting tool. And anyway, I, I probably I didn't mention the uh, the model number. This particular one is a GPL5. Stan has a newer version uh, that's um, uh, got a green laser. But there's the, uh, the lays, and there's the lays, and there's the lays, and then there's the vertical one. So anyway, it, it's kind of cool. So you can actually um, very quickly, and this will shoot uh, ooh, um, pretty far, uh, all the way across a big building. So, uh, and, um, and so you can construct a, uh, um, or align something uh, uh, parallel or perpendicular to an existing structure or the building structure itself or align in the concrete or whatever you want to do. And it's a lightweight unit. You can put it in your pocket and take it up the ladder and uh, and uh, slap it on with a magnet. And uh, Bob's your uncle. So I just want to show you the kind of the uh, the power situation here. Um, so this pole right here, this is mine. But and this is only single phase here. But if you look in the background over there, back in that area, you see that pole right there. It's not that far away. That has three phase on it. So the long-term goal would be to actually get three phase um, landed on this pole. And then I'm just gonna pan here, so bear with me here. And then here's my, there's my service right there. Okay, um, so that's my service, that's my well pump and all that. Uh, we're gonna go up here in a second and talk about this disconnect that we added in here. So the reality is, it's not that terribly far for real three phase there. So um, anyway, I got uh, to have a conversation with PG&E and it's really kind of a long-term project and uh, it may just be too expensive uh, um, to, to do, um, but I certainly wanna have that conversation and, and see, you know, if it's, five thousand dollars i'm certainly interested if it's fifty thousand dollars yeah i can generate a lot of my own three phase for that kind of money so but let's go look at this disconnect that we put in or that stan and i put in so you might ask why the heck did you put this big old disconnect in tom well i'll tell you why and the reason is um it gives me a a, a single place that i can 
isolate the shop. I just shut the whole shop down, okay? Mainly because I want to open this. Um, the other is the person that um, wired the shop previously. So this is a 200 amp service here. But the wire size running from the service disconnect here to the shop was only, the wire was only rated for 100 amps okay so uh, and there so there's no protection for the wire so if I pulled 150 amps uh, or 200 amps in the shop which I could easily do um, that wire would just be sitting in that conduit cooking and you wouldn't even know it okay um, so what we did was we put this beautiful disconnect in okay and we it's a fused disconnect and we fused it for 100 amps okay now as you see it's a three phase uh, disconnect and this is a 200 amp uh, rated uh, disconnect switch so if I do get um, um, 200 amp uh, three phase pulled in um, this is sized correctly for that future future thing okay anyway I hope that makes sense right now these have these uh, these little um, uh, fuse reducer, uh, so you can put a smaller fuse in them. So uh, ad fuse adapters, that's what the word I was looking for. But anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's that, okay? And these are sized for 200 amps here, uh, and those come from the, the lugs on the other side there, so. Okay, shop back on. And uh, I can lotto here too if I want to, right? So if I'm doing any electrical out in the shop, um, I can uh, I can put a lock on here or uh, uh, something on here so somebody can't turn it on while I'm working uh, doing electrical up in the rafters over there. So anyway, stand and I put that in and um, and uh, anyway, da da da. So one of the cool things that happened when Stan was here was uh, he. Uh, enlightened me and gave me some uh, conduit bending lessons. So, you know, I've bent some conduit, uh, not very much, uh, in my travels. Um, and, you know, so these are, these are my benders here, my little hand benders. You should see stands. Uh, they have this, uh, this wonderful patina of a lot of use. <laughs> Mine, uh, uh, they still got that rookie newness uh, look to them. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to say, you know, working with a professional like Stan and them sharing uh, some of their uh, tricks of the trade, right? And uh, uh, that was probably the best part for me, right? Is, uh, you know, learning the magic of a 30 degree bend, right? And, uh, and you're like, oh, what is the magic of a 30 degree bend? Well, I'm not even gonna tell you because what I'm gonna tell you to do is go look at Stan's video, Conduit Bending 101, okay? This is uh, Barzi Industrial, uh, Shade, uh, Shaden HKW, he's got this dopey uh, uh, YouTube channel name. It's from his gaming years or whatever. But anyway, Barzi Industrial, Conduit Bending 101. It's one of his most popular videos, and uh, he just breaks it down, and it's wonderful. So go check that out. And um, anyway, I just wanted to shout out to Stan for sharing some of his knowledge, and uh, you know the difference between the star and the arrow, and the uh, and what stub six inches to arrow means, and you know, and all those wonderful things, right? And some of the trickery uh, that you could do with. Uh, some of the other ends and, uh, and things like that. So uh, anyway, it was a lot of fun I appreciate it. And I just wanted to say thank you, Stan. I, I do appreciate that, okay, buddy? And, uh, and then thanking uh, American Rotary again. And uh, those guys really, you know, work behind the scenes and, uh, uh, and help out the YouTube community and uh, with a good product and, uh, and support. So thank you guys very much. Okay, uh, let's look at some other clips that I have. Uh, I got some uh, kind of handheld garbage clips from, um, uh, I went over and started working on disconnecting the, uh, the wire EDM machine uh, that I bought. And I got some clips from that. And I don't know, I got some random stuff in there and uh, we'll check it out. And I'll see you guys next time. So I just ran into one of those situations that makes the 
YouTube community and the internet awesome, okay? So we ran into a situation where um, um, our friend, and all you guys probably know him, Mr. Keith Fenner, uh, Turn Right Machine Works, his uh, uh, current uh, rotary phase converter is on its last legs and dying. It's got some unknown problem or bearing problems or something. Um, my new shop, um, I was gifted a brand new uh, ADX uh, uh, rotary phase converter by a really generous viewer that never hooked it up. And these are from our good friends uh, at American Rotary, which are awesome YouTube uh, uh, supporters. Uh, they really help out in the YouTube community. And um, anyway, um, um, I'm, I've got a, a 30 horsepower on order. This is a 20 horsepower. This is what Keith needs. He needs an indoor unit. I need an outdoor unit. So we're doing a little swap -a -roo, all compliments of uh, uh, Stan Zinkowski uh, at Barzy Industrial, so uh, otherwise known as Shaden HKW on uh, on YouTube. Go check his channel out. Um, anyway, so I'm putting this in a crate. This is going uh, back to Keith Fenner. Uh, American Rotary is sending me a 30 horsepower outdoor unit, and Stan's going to help me install it. And it's a wonderful relationship. Um, this is what I call the uh, uh, the YouTube community here. Right? and we help each other out and uh, it's pretty awesome. Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So let's check uh, check out what I'm doing today. Okay, we're over in Shingle Springs, California, and I am in the process of disconnecting the electrical control cabinet from the main machine on this fun Fanuc Robocut Alpha Zero B. Uh, this is a new machine going into the Ox Tools shop here. And um, um, so I've been working for a few hours here, disconnecting uh, the chiller and uh, the pump. And uh, it was running on a phase converter, so I had to disconnect that without killing myself <laughs> electrically. And um, so it's going pretty good so far. And uh, let's, let's go around the machine here. Uh, I just removed these uh, water connections uh, that went from the pump and filter cart uh, to the main machine and uh, I still have those uh, instrumentation wires or well you know signal wires and whatnot are they're going through that uh, rectangular hole there um, so that I'm at a stop point right now I figured I'd shoot a little video and uh, you guys could get a look at the machine and uh, let's uh, go around the back side here let's open that the cabinet here, the thing is in wonderful shape, and uh, it's got your fanic yellow. 
All right, and that's the main um, <coughs> brain there, the, the servo controls. Pardon my uh, my floaty uh, camera work there. Okay, main panel. Main panel. So rats haven't got to this. <laughs> So I looked at this machine about two years ago, and when I did, um, I fired it up and actually ran it a little bit. Let me close this. And I'll show you what I did is, um, where is this Mr. Battery? So I kind of had the, th the thought uh, that I didn't want the, uh, the parameters to die on this. Where the heck is it? Um, anyway, I put a new memory battery in it. That's all I wanted to say. And uh, although, where's the heck? Oh, you know what? I don't even remember where I, where it is. But I thought I put a date on it. And I usually put a date on it. Oh, it's under here. Okay. So I put a new um, a new memory battery in it. I just happened to have one when I came to look at the machine, and the machine had been sitting for a while. So uh, um, anyway, I swapped the battery, and uh, just in case uh, the deal went through. The 16W control. Um, it's, I think the machine is 95 vintage. Um, let's see if we can find the find the tag on this little monkey. Um, around the back. Around the back. Um, I don't know where they hide it on these. Uh, oh, here we go. What do we got there? Nope, that's not it. Uh, usually, there's a tag that gives the uh, gives the age of the machine. It's a little dusty. I'm getting dirty doing the work here, but uh, overall, uh, uh, it's going well.